permit should be visible for anyone who's uh, on looking for the street to be able to see what your permit is. Okay, and also I've been able to get quite a few, I've been able to see quite a few permits online. That's a fairly good resource, it's not the best. You, you have two different links, one says permits after 2009, that link doesn't work. For anybody that tries to get into that link, it just doesn't work. It's never worked for me. Okay. But I can often find, or I should say sometimes find, the more recent permits even in the link that says before 2009. So you're saying before 2009, you, it's not working for you, the link? No, no, after 2009. After 2009. Yeah, there's the two links, permits after 2009. That link I've never been able to get to work. However, I sometimes am able to find the newer permits in the older permit link before 2009. Okay. But not always. You, it, you know, it's catch it, catch it, is it, catch it, as, or whatever it is. Catch it, catch it. Well, I'm going to take notes. As things come up, if you notice that there's some inconsistency, let me take them back to the department and see. Um, maybe they're, they're currently working on it, or maybe it might be a, a systems thing. I don't know. But I'd rather at least take the notes so that we can start to improve, because you are kind of our ears and eyes on the street, and we learn from each other. Um, any more questions? Well, it would no certainly be good to be able to go online and see every active permit. And currently, it seems not to be uh, complete. So any other questions? Uh, you know, last month or the month before about drills up on top of roof tops. Yeah, I don't think that that's something that we, the fire department deals with the regulations of the of the grills, but that we don't we don't authorize grills to be placed on any on any rooftops. Yeah. Excuse me, but isn't the entire fire escape supposed to be clear so that if God forbid there is a fire, there shouldn't be a plant, a table, two chairs? or anything on that fire escape if you're trying to save your life? So the fire department regulates the things that are on the fire escape. So yeah. we, we typically don't do that. If we see something, we can, you know, send a building inspector and he'll say, you know, take stuff out of the fire escape and that kind of thing. But really it's the fire department that deals with. Well, well what I'm trying to say to you is, for the fire department. Well, Any, well, they see things in the fire escape. Who should they call? Let me just give you a blanket number to call because this is really to me the best resource is to call the mayor's hotline number for any questions that you have. That way they'll direct you to the right department even if you're not sure calling in. And it gives you a tracking number for everything you're doing. They'll send you back an email so that you'll know that you check in for a specific number. Um, and then they'll send you an email with the update of the progress as it's closed out. So even for ISD issues, our department's number is 635-5300, but we close at a certain hour and all our phone calls are shifted over to the mayor's hotline anyway. So it's, it's a good rule of thumb um, to call them. But if you want to talk to an inspector and a live body during the hours of our operations between um, 8 and 4, that would be great if you, if you have specific concerns about talking to inspectors and that kind of thing. Inspectors generally for the building department are in after 3 o'clock in the afternoon. That's they're working out between 3 and 4 if you need to talk to someone directly. What's a non-exempt rental unit? What so, is the that? Mm -hmm. So where are you reading from? Uh, Maryland, you know, like yes. the three Maryland government. Okay, so there are, um, depending on the, the level of housing that you have, um, you can you can ask for exemption depending on like your schedule of your building. So there are special clauses. If you ask for exemption, you have to have like a really clean record with ISD of no building violations with your building. And so you can ask for an exemption for a time frame because within the five year time frame, every unit um, within the city of Boston that, that qualifies would be um, would be registered with inspectional services. So the exemption clauses allow you to um, phase out at, at given times because of the amount of housing that you might have, or that maybe you have owner-occupied units that are there, which would need to be registered. Okay. Um, so let me just keep brought up some of the papers. Is, let is, me, that, is that condos too? <coughs> condo buildings? Is that, is that considered if it's a union? 
at the next meet? When do you well, the tickets go on the door now. It's the first Thursday of every month. First Thursday of the summer? Yes. Well, yeah, and I was not like that. Yeah. 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 I didn't know yeah. how my tenants are on the street, I'm told. So you should know that these things are now mail. And I, you know, I honestly have. So what you're saying is that we should contact your office if we don't have a response to uh, an inspector coming down to look to me and see who's got to get it. How do we know we just say it comes? Um, well, if you enter into the 24 hour hotline, which I'm suggesting, then you'll get an email back that says we came they, out. They do say, they, when they mail us back an email, they say that the case is open, we have received your complaint, that's the last we hear of them. That's it. But we don't know if they got a ticket, if they got reprimanded. If they came out and looked at it, nothing. We know nothing. Then try to track it down and have the number y'all want to hold. Well, you can, I, I'll leave, I can give you my number, but I'll give you my card. And you can always call me if you have, um, if you have, a, I'll state a case you don't need to have with that. I mean, I don't communicate with all the time in that way. My number is 617-961-3369. But I would say that it hasn't been my experience that um, when a case is closed, the, the residents are not notified. 3369 or 6639? 6369. 3369. Everybody, don't forget that city of Boston online.gov and the 24 hour mayor's hotline. Everybody knows that you'll get a tracking number and there'll be a follow up from whatever division of city government that it pertains to, whether it's you know, code enforcement, the police, the fire, DPW. Yeah. You know, I, I own the retail yeah. newspaper, and I get a lot of memos saying the trash is out, we've called, it's still there, and I'm just continuously taking pictures. Sometimes the trash has been there three, four days. Well, they're not going to move the trash, but they're going to ticket them, and then their responsibility of the owner, but they can be ticketed every single day that that trash is out there. So the other day there was trash going from that wall to that wall. And I called yeah. up and said, it's been there for two days, it's on its third day. Wouldn't the city say, let's send somebody down there and pick it up? Not you, not you, but ticketing. But wouldn't your department tell the city to say, come down and get rid of that trash? Well, I'm part of the city, but I, I think at some point we can call somebody, but typically what we do is we ticket the person and then they are asked to remove it. If it's student weekend, we have extra trucks on the street. As soon as we ticket it, we pick it up. So this is just a yeah. yeah. But people don't you know, have no way of knowing the tickets have been issued now because they don't put them on like they used to. So right. I think people. Yeah, but every ticket that they give, is it, a, is, it informa is it public information to see that if, if I call uh, about a bag? And, Okay. What about the garbage collectors that have to get the bag and like throw them 30 feet, you know, hit the side of the truck, the bag break, they make half ass, so they have to clean it up, then they drive off. Uh, public works, you should report that to the mayor's hotline if that happened, and so it's going to the public works department. Try and see how far they can throw the bag and how the trash pickers are getting ready. The trash Olympics, they're trying to get it. It's a bad thing, yes. Yeah. We wonder about that too. I mean, is there some kind of arrangement that the city has with the guns? People say, you know, pick up the trash at breaks. So, I've been in meetings with public works where they, they're, they're, the garbage contractor is not supposed to just throw it and leave it. But, I mean, if you can imagine. I mean, sometimes the way that people put the trash together, it's not that it's not an easy thing to do with a two-sided thing. But what could happen is if that's happening consistently, consistently, we could flyer the area so that everybody knows that you know how to package their trash, and then also flag the contractor to let them know that this has been a consistent problem so everybody can learn. So just be active. So, yeah. And then on some of the um, contractors that do the pickup, we'll call them first and we'll talk to the boss, find out who the employee is, and you know, either Pretty take them off the route or do something about it because we've gotten this complaint before. And we do, so, you know, we've done follow from these meetings and stuff. So I, I'll just quickly talk about the other departments. I talked about code enforcement. Everyone knows they deal with what? Trash. 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 Rats too? No. no. Environmental deals with the rats. So if you 
Those well, things. A lot of times people want people to move immediately, and we don't work that way. We don't evict them. We just start the process. Okay. Those that may have heard of potential illegal apartment and illegal activities at one Wigan Street underneath the uh, Wild Duck can rest easier now because that space is no longer an apartment, which I think confirms to me that it was an illegal apartment. It's now part of the Wild Duck business. So that activity that was going on oh, in yeah. there, at least observed. We were up there three times for that. Talk to the owner, I talked to the people upstairs, how they can grow. We've been down there, we got a couple of investigations on that basement. Yeah, well, my understanding is it's now part of the business, and so we shouldn't have those problems. Yeah. So just being proactive, because I know one of the reasons that I was conscious of coming out to this meeting was because of the fire that happened at Austin Bryan. If you know that there's a space that's being constantly used for parties, you should let us know because it's likely it's not known for that. And then we can come out and make sure it's not a, like a, a legal club, basically, in a, in a unit. Or if you know that more than four students are living in a particular apartment, then we can come out for that. Because a lot of times what happens is if it's more than that many students, there's a lot of activity happening there. And so they kind of flag themselves. Um, so if you know that there's an apartment that has more than four students, so, then there's also, so but they have to be one undergraduate. Bedroom, or in a one bedroom, or how would they have they touch that? Four, four in an apartment. Four is a total. <coughs> right, but they, they, they cannot be, um, if this is an ordinance specifically written towards the undergraduate students mm -hmm. full time. So you can have an undergraduate student who dropped out of one of his classes, not full time, and it does not qualify. So if you can imagine there's an investigation that has to happen, and sometimes that takes time, it takes witnesses, we need your help to really push it along. Because what happens is a lot of times students live in a place for only a year anyway. So by the time we finish the investigation, it's almost time for roll out. So in order for it to be effective, we need people to come up and say, you know, I saw that many students there. Um, I saw they had two leases. You know, all these kinds of things are tricks that landlords have used so that when you approach them, they have more, but it's all on one lease. Um, so these are the kind of things that are happening. But I think the two biggest things that happen, according to the meetings that I've attended over the years, is the roof deck stuff that happens in this neighborhood in particular. You have the trash that's being put out in the wrong kinds of containers that um, we can take it for to stop the behavior and we can flyer for so the students know not to do it. Because uh, a lot of times people just don't know any better. They see other people do it and they do it. Um, and then um, the, the parties that happen. We work in concert with police and other divisions um, to make sure that those units at least don't have more than four students if they're continuing disruption. And now we have new tools, too. The mayor has a proper property tax force put in place. So if you get a number of instances, I think it's eight, you get put on this task force so that everyone's zoomed in on that. All the different division heads are zoomed in on that apartment. And then they'll be given fees, like the police stay outside of it, right, that are exorbitant for security and those kinds of things. So just to let you know that there are now new tools that they are being put in place. Okay. That's the worst of the worst. The worst they, they like the drug activity shows. Yeah, it's kind of, that's when it's like completely, yeah. the, when it's the completely off the hook. We do that, yeah. Okay. They'll put the big flashing signs up front. So even if it's not the, the, the big official problem property task force, if you have a problem with a certain unit, it can go to um, the one that we do over at City Hall every month, and we could remedy it, particularly with the schools, because the schools are sitting around the table, and we'll mail letters to the students um, for them to have corrective action at the school, as well as to the landlords from that group. So there, there, there's a lot of stuff that's happening behind the scenes. Any questions before I sit down? I know. Can I ask you a little yeah. code, code enforcement question? Yeah. If they're not called, they don't come, they don't see it, right? They don't, they don't no, patrol? No, that's not true. There are code enforcement officers that walk the district all week long. So they can see it on their own, too. And if they come out with something else, they see another violation of right now. So that's why when you say, you know, you call, a lot of times the active people are upset because they'll call upon these other folks and then they'll come out and they'll get a ticket because it came out and just went over the whole screen. Excuse me one minute. So this problem that we're talking about has been going on for 20 years. So we are, we haven't accomplished anything in 20 years. Which problem? The problem of trash. The problem of 
vandalism, whatever's going on in these neighborhoods, it, they're making it sound too cut and dry for me. The bottom line is, all these things you say are wonderful, but we've been hearing this for 20 years, and as far as I'm concerned, they haven't left a big enough dent in this area because it is constantly the same buildings, week after week, month after month, and year after year. Like the problem on Charter and uh, Henchman, I mean, there's something wrong with the picture. Someone Charter isn't doing the job, and it's certainly not us. The Charter and Henchman is noise. Charter and Henchman had a lag band, I told you, about 10 to 15 years ago. She wasn't here then. She wasn't, she had I don't know, know, but I'm saying, oh, oh, she wasn't here when right. I said that? Well, and, and, and I'll honestly, I was here, but I didn't, I didn't catch okay. the address. So, that's so it, it is constantly the same problems with noise, the same problems with trash, and I gave uh, Loretta here a flyer in regards to the Metro, how they're going to put cameras in certain parts of the city. So we'll spend in the code of work now tomorrow for charter attention, and I'll alert them that this has been a continuous problem. But is there a specific address range that they should go to? Is there an address and that's the intersection? Yeah, that's, no. that's, that's the best way to go, Charter. Right. And right. and right. I don't know the exact address. Okay, that's fine. Oh, I'm going to send them all the way out for just a minute. Thank you, Latifa, for coming. Thank you very much. Quick announcement. Quick announcement. Next year, the next meeting will be scheduled for July 4th. Obviously, it's July 4th. We're not going to have the meeting on July 4th. Why? Because it's July 4th. We're not going to have the meeting on July 4th. Just to tell you what I'm going to do. August 1st, which was the first Thursday in August, we will have the meeting. Yes, we're going to schedule the room. We usually don't have a meeting in August, but because we missed in July, we're in August. Thank you all for coming. I appreciate your interest. I love your room today, by the way.